Hi yeah. It's Thursday, 16th of April. It's just getting on to six o'clock at night. Um, again, this is completely unscripted, unrehearsed, and I just felt the need to come on and say some stuff. Uh, a, I have a kitchen floor. <laughs> May as well get the nice stuff out of the way. I've got a kitchen floor and one worktop. Uh, done good today. Uh, I'm knackered. And if I keep sweating, it's because I literally stopped about five, ten minutes ago. Uh, again, still got blocked nose. Uh, and I've been in all day by myself, as always. But none of that's why I'm here. As part of my process at self isolating, I have to call my work once a week just to do a kind of report and make sure I'm okay and check the status and things like that. But today, today I was told that one of the security guards has passed away. Out of respect for his family and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to say who it is or anything. If anybody knows me or has worked for me and wants to know and they want to private message me, do that and I'll let you know who it was. But, yeah. I'm not going to do uh, false information and fake news and stuff like that. From what I can gather, he didn't actually pass from COVID-19. Um, but he was self-isolating because he had symptoms and developed a blood clot in his leg. So, technically he didn't die of coronavirus, but I don't think it helped. Um, sorry to be all morbid and stuff, but this is a video I respect for him. I love the guy. Um, he was dead funny. And he could talk for Scotland. As part of the role of security uh, or customer service officer, uh, he's got to stand behind where I work. And, and the whole time he's worked there, I can't remember anybody else where I've had the most random, just ridiculously funny conversations. Um, I really enjoyed when his work job meant that he had to stand behind me because it meant I knew I always had somebody to talk to. He was one of the nicest guys I've ever met and I know any time somebody passes away everybody comes out and says oh he was one of the nicest guys you've ever met in your time. but he was. He was just lovely. He didn't have a bad word to say about anybody and he was just really cool. Um... This one, this is weird. This is my first direct contact for all the thousands and thousands of people that have died of this horrible, horrible disease that we're in the midst of. Um, this is the first one that I can seriously say has had a direct impact on me. I found out about four hours ago, three hours ago. And it's made the whole thing really, really real. As if being locked in a house for three weeks hasn't been enough to make it real, but this has made it <coughs> personal. Coronavirus has taken somebody away from me now. And I would imagine it's going to take more. But this is my first. To anybody who's suffered a loss, my deepest, deepest sympathies go out to you. I only knew this guy through work and it's had a profound effect on me today. I don't know how I'm going to cope if it's ever one of my relatives, somebody that I, I love, I've spoken to a couple of friends that I work with 
online or through Facebook Messenger and things like that that have coronavirus symptoms or have had it and touch wood every single one of them seems to be on the men's some of them have actually went back to work as well and knowing that some of my friends work colleagues whatever you want to call them that had coronavirus it was really scary but now I know somebody that's died indirectly because of coronavirus and I don't like it so anybody who has been directly affected by this there is nothing I can say I want to do that my thoughts are with you but that's just so condescending and patronising of course my thoughts are with you my thoughts are with everybody just now I don't care if you've got something that's directly related or directly affected by coronavirus everybody's thoughts should be with everybody because everybody's in the exact same boat it doesn't matter if you're a street sweeper or prime minister and I don't care what your political opinions are nobody deserves this disease it's horrendous it doesn't have any boundaries. It does no rules to it. And I was talking to my manager today. And we were having a wee chat about the fact that this is the first time in the 45 years of my life anyway. That this is ever anything like this has ever happened. Yeah, well, we've all seen films. We've seen Pandemic and whatever the Dustin Hoffman one is. Um, Outbreak. And yeah, we all watch it. But it's actually happening. As of this recording, we've broke the two million barrier in deaths. And it's just surreal. It's 2020 and I live on a planet where we are in such a state that we're in lockdown because this virus is taking over the world. <laughs> and I know I'm laughing, and it's only because that's what I do. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's, if I don't, I'll just sit and cry. One thing I will say. Even though all of this is going on, you get people like that Captain Tom Moore, a hundred year old man who wanted to raise a thousand pounds for the NHS and I'm looking at his page just now and I'm looking at him on BBC News and he's raised 16 million. If that doesn't make you smile, nothing will. So my heart, my heart and everything is dust to this guy it's phenomenal and if he doesn't get a knighthood there is something seriously wrong with the planet so if you're having problems dealing with coronavirus and it's getting you down there's a guy who's literally just turned 100 who's just raised four, 16 million pound for the nhs by walking around his garden Guys, I know I say it in every video, but this is a beautiful planet. I still believe it. I'm going to believe it every day until the day I die. Coronavirus will take people from me. Coronavirus will take people from every single one of us. But it won't win. We are clever. And we will beat it. It's just going to take a wee bit of time. A bit of patience. And it's going to take a lot of people calming down. I'm seeing a lot of people getting abuse online and a lot of people abusing people without knowing the whole story a lot of uh, NHS workers who are staying in caravans and things like that are getting dogs abused because idiots walking past think they're tourists and on holiday these people are saving our lives day in day out you've got no right to judge them so I'll admit I've been guilty of it anytime I've went to the shops if I see people out my automatic thought is, do you know what you're doing? Then I have to hit myself because 
I'm out as well. Um, I did see a group of guys playing football the other day and that kind of made me angry, but there's always going to be people that do things like that. But don't be too quick to judge. I know for a fact I'm not leaving the house unless I really, really have to. And I would imagine 99% of the planet are the same. So if you do see a caravan or you do see something like that, or you see somebody buying three loaves, don't automatically assume they're crazy, selfish, panic buying. I saw a girl on Facebook and apparently she was reduced to tears by some idiot in a shopping centre because she had three loaves. And it turned out she was buying one for her mum and one for her gran and one for her. Then she was going to risk her own life to take these to these people. And she had to stand and take verbal abuse. The same with people who work in these places. I've heard about staff getting just slaughtered because they won't sell somebody six rolls of toilet roll. Get a grip of yourself. Anybody who's working just now deserves a knighthood and a wage rise. I would love to be able to work just now. I want to help. I feel dead gilly about the fact that I'm not at work. Uh, and I just found out today that I'm not even suitable for to work from home when I offered. But that's neither here nor there. I'm a high risk because I'm a heart condition and I am not going to take any risks. I'd much rather live with the guilt of not being able to do my job just now than not be here to deal with the guilt, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I do have a couple of friends that are quite sick just now. So to them, if you're watching, I really, really hope that you get better soon. I miss everybody. I miss every single person that I know the name of. I don't care if the last time I saw you was 1985. Just now, I guarantee you, you've been in my thoughts. And I hope and pray that at the end of all of this, every single one of you are still here. That'll do. For now. Guys, have a good day. Um, to the security guard, I hope his family are coping under this horrible, horrible time. Um, again, if you know me and you work with me or if you know anybody that works in my place, please private message me and I'll let you know who it was. Um, but yeah, guys, look after yourselves and look after each other, please. Do what you can. And I shall chat to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.